Due to the incredible response to Eden's Gate, Alien Haven, we're excited to continue the thrilling journey of David and Ilara. In the first part, we followed David, a seasoned astronaut whose deep space mission went awry, leading him to crash land on a mysterious planet. There, he discovered a society of women who had evolved beyond the need for men. Among them was Ilara, a courageous woman who questioned her people's rigid beliefs. Together, they escaped this matriarchal world, finding love and starting a new life on a distant, uncharted planet. If you haven't experienced the first part yet, be sure to check it out through the link in the description. David and Ilara had finally found peace. Their new home was a planet of untamed beauty, with lush forests, rolling hills, and sparkling lakes. They had settled in a fertile valley, building a small but comfortable settlement using the advanced technology they had gathered during their travels. It was a place far from the oppressive matriarchal rule of Edenus, where they could start fresh and live freely. David, a man once driven by his sense of duty and exploration, now found himself in a different role, that of a father and protector. His time on Edenus had changed him, forcing him to confront his own vulnerabilities. On Earth, he had been a hero, but on Edenus, he was seen as an outsider, a contaminant. This experience had left him deeply introspective, often questioning his own worth and the true meaning of strength. In his quiet moments, David wondered if he could ever fully protect his family in a universe that seemed intent on tearing them apart. Ilara had undergone her own transformation. As a former member of the ruling class on Edenus, she had been raised to believe in the superiority of her people's way of life. The rigid, emotionless efficiency of her society had left her feeling hollow, even before meeting David. He had awakened in her emotions that she had been taught to suppress, love, fear, and hope. Now, as a mother and partner, Ilara struggled with the guilt of abandoning her people and the fear that they might be right about the dangers men posed. She often questioned whether she could ever truly belong anywhere. Their days were filled with simple, fulfilling tasks. David had set up a sustainable farm, growing crops that could thrive in the planet's soil, while Ilara focused on creating a safe and nurturing environment for their growing family. They had two children, a boy named Erin and a girl named Lyra, who were the light of their lives. The process of reproduction had been a delicate and deeply personal journey for them. Ilara's people, the women of Edenus, had long abandoned traditional reproduction, relying on advanced biotechnologies to continue their race without the need for men. However, Ilara and David, driven by their love and the desire to build a family, sought a different path. Using a combination of Edenus genetic engineering technology and David's knowledge from Earth, they created a hybrid method of reproduction. Ilara's body, though designed to be self-sufficient, had been altered with David's help to allow for natural conception. It was a symbolic merging of two worlds, their love manifesting in the creation of life. The process involved combining David's genetic material with Ilara's, using a modified version of Edina's reproductive technology. Ilara carried their children naturally, a profound experience that connected her to the very essence of what it meant to be human. The births were joyous occasions, celebrated quietly in their secluded home, with David marveling at the miracle of life they had brought into the world. Erin and Lyra were a perfect blend of their parents. Erin with David's adventurous spirit and Ilara's sharp intellect, and Lyra with her mother's grace and her father's curiosity. As the children grew, David and Ilara devoted themselves to teaching them about their dual heritage, the wonders of the universe and the importance of compassion and resilience. Their children's upbringing was a delicate balance of nurturing love and the harsh reality that their family's existence was a defiance of the norm. David and Ilara were painfully aware that their children would face a world hostile to the very idea of their existence. David, in particular, struggled with the fear that his children might one day be hunted for what they represented, a union of two worlds that were never meant to coexist. They were not alone on this journey. Their loyal companion Vara, a large feline-like creature they had rescued from another planet, stood as a guardian of their family. Vara was intelligent, brave, and fiercely protective, often accompanying the children on their explorations of the valley. 
Vera's presence was a constant reminder of the wild, untamed nature of the universe. The creature was both a protector and a link to the unknown, embodying the delicate balance between domestication and the primal forces that lay just beneath the surface. David often saw a reflection of himself in Vera, a being caught between worlds, trying to find a place to belong. Their days were filled with learning, exploration, and the simple joys of family life. They had access to advanced educational resources from both Edenus and Earth, and they made sure that their children were well-versed in science, history, and the arts. At the same time, they encouraged creativity and play, allowing Erin and Lyra to develop their unique talents. The planet itself was a treasure trove of discoveries. Its diverse ecosystem was home to a variety of strange and wonderful creatures, some friendly, others dangerous. David and Ilara spent much of their time cataloging the flora and fauna, using their knowledge to understand the planet's environment and ensure their survival. For transportation, they had a small helicopter they used for longer explorations. This vehicle allowed them to cover more ground and discover the planet's secrets. It was during one of these flights that they made an incredible discovery, ruins of an ancient civilization that had once thrived on the planet. The ruins were vast, covering an area that stretched for miles. Ancient stone structures, now partially reclaimed by nature, hinted at a once great civilization. As David and Ilara explored the site, they found remnants of advanced technology, inscriptions in a language they couldn't read, and artifacts that defied explanation. It became clear that the civilization had been far more advanced than either Earth or Adenis. They had achieved a level of technological prowess that bordered on the miraculous, yet something had caused their downfall. The ruins were silent, the only evidence of their existence being the remnants left behind. David and Ilara were determined to uncover the truth. They spent weeks studying the ruins, deciphering the ancient texts with the help of their hybrid technology, and piecing together the history of the lost civilization. What they found both intrigued and disturbed them. David, who had always been driven by a desire to explore and understand, now found himself confronting the darker side of discovery. The knowledge that this advanced civilization had been destroyed by its own creations weighed heavily on him. He began to question the morality of using the technologies they had found, fearing that he might unwittingly repeat the mistakes of the past. Ilara was haunted by the parallels between this lost civilization and her own people. The Adenis society, in its quest for perfection and control, had also eradicated what they deemed undesirable. Ilara couldn't help but wonder if her people were on a similar path to self-destruction, blinded by their belief in their own superiority. This realization deepened her internal conflict, making her question whether she had truly escaped her past or if it still had a hold on her. Among their discoveries was a mention of a device known as the Genesis device, a powerful tool capable of terraforming entire planets. This device, according to the texts, had been the key to the civilization's rise, but also the cause of their ultimate destruction. David and Ilara realized that their new home was not as peaceful as it seemed. The planet held dark secrets, and the potential for great danger still lingered beneath its surface. They decided to be cautious, keeping their discoveries hidden while they continued to explore and learn. Their explorations also led to deeper conversations between them. They discussed the ethics of using the Genesis device, the responsibilities that came with such power, and the lessons they should impart to their children. These conversations were tinged with fear, as they both knew that their discovery could either be the key to their survival or the instrument of their destruction. Their peaceful life was shattered one morning when a fleet of high-tech spaceships appeared in the sky. The ships, sleek and menacing, bore the unmistakable markings of Edenus. David and Ilara barely had time to react before the ships descended upon their settlement, weapons blazing. The fleet had been sent by the Council of Edenus, who had tracked Ilara to her new home. The Council, led by Ilara's former mentor High Counselor, Eliana, viewed her defection as a threat to their society's purity. Eliana, once a mother figure to Ilara, now saw her as a dangerous aberration. The Council's mission was clear, to capture or kill Ilara and anyone associated with her. 
At the same time, another alien faction, drawn by rumors of the Genesis device, launched their own attack, believing that David and Ilara possessed the powerful artifact. This faction, the Tarkins, were a nomadic species known for their ruthless pursuit of ancient technologies. Their leader, Kovar, believed that the Genesis device was the key to reviving their dying world, and he would stop at nothing to obtain it. David, Ilara, and Vera fought back with everything they had. They used their advanced weaponry, the defenses they had built around their home, and the knowledge they had gained from the ruins to hold off the invaders, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. David fought with a ferocity that surprised even himself. The stakes were higher than they had ever been, and he was driven by the primal need to protect his family. But even as he fought, he was tormented by doubt. Had he made a mistake by bringing Ilara and their children to this planet? Was he condemning them to the same fate as the ancient civilization they had discovered? Ilara was torn between her loyalty to David and her ingrained sense of duty to her people. As she fought, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was battling ghosts. Echoes of the life she had left behind on Adenis. The sight of Eliana, her former mentor, leading the attack only deepened her sense of betrayal and guilt. She began to question whether she had ever truly escaped the influence of her upbringing, or if she was still a pawn in a game she didn't fully understand. During the battle, the alien invaders managed to steal much of their technology and resources, leaving the family vulnerable. Worse still, Ilara was captured by the Adenis fleet and taken aboard their ship, leaving David alone with his children and Vera. As the ships departed, taking Ilara with them, David felt a wave of despair wash over him. His family was torn apart, and their hard-won peace was shattered, but he knew he couldn't give up. He had to find a way to rescue Ilara and protect his children from the dangers that still loomed. David's despair deepened as he tried to gather his thoughts and plan his next move. He was a man of action, but for the first time, he felt utterly powerless. The weight of his failures pressed down on him. He had promised Alara a new life, a safe life, but all he had brought her was more pain and danger. But just when he thought things couldn't get worse, a massive earthquake shook the planet. The ground beneath their settlement cracked open, and David, along with Vara, fell into a deep chasm. The fall was terrifying, but they survived, landing in a vast underground cavern. As David picked himself up, he realized they had stumbled upon something incredible, an ancient spaceship hidden deep beneath the planet's surface. It was unlike anything he had ever seen, a relic of the lost civilization they had been studying. The ship was enormous, its design sleek and elegant, yet bristling with advanced weaponry and technology. David knew instantly that this was no ordinary ship. It was a powerful fighter craft, equipped with AI far beyond anything he had encountered. As David approached the ship, the AI activated, recognizing him as a potential pilot. The ship's systems came online, and the cavern was bathed in a soft, otherworldly light. The AI, with its calm and reassuring voice, introduced itself as Aurora and it quickly integrated with David's own neural systems. Aurora was more than just a machine. It was a repository of the ancient civilization's knowledge and wisdom. Through their connection, David began to understand the weight of the responsibility that had been thrust upon him. Aurora shared with him the history of its creators, their triumphs, their hubris, and their eventual downfall. The AI was designed not just to protect but to guide, and it saw in David the potential to avoid the mistakes of the past. David knew this ship was his only hope of rescuing Ilara. With Aurora's help, he quickly learned how to operate the craft, tapping into its vast tour of knowledge and capabilities. The ship was a marvel of engineering, capable of interstellar travel, advanced combat maneuvers, and even cloaking technology that made it nearly invisible to sensors. Determined to save Ilara, David prepared to take off. He and Vera boarded the ship, and with a surge of power, they blasted out of the cavern and into the sky. The ancient ship was a force to be reckoned with, and David was confident that with its help, he could rescue Ilara and defeat their enemies. But as they soared through the stars, David couldn't shake the fear that he was now walking the same path as the ancient civilization that had created Aurora. 
The power he wielded was immense, and he knew that if he wasn't careful, it could consume him. David guided the ship towards Edenus, using its advanced stealth capabilities to avoid detection. As they neared the planet, Aurora provided detailed scans of the surface, highlighting key locations and potential threats. David's heart pounded as he recognized the layout of Edenus, its towering cities, and the imposing Grand Nexus where the Council resided. Aurora suggested a plan. They would use a small, non-combat shuttle to land on the planet undetected, while the main ship remained cloaked in orbit. David would infiltrate the Grand Nexus, locate Ilara, and bring her back to the ship, where they would make their escape. It was a risky plan, but David knew it was their best chance. He and Vera boarded the shuttle, and with Aurora's guidance, they descended towards Edenus. The shuttle landed in a secluded area near the Grand Nexus, and David, armed with advanced weapons and tools, began his infiltration. David, now driven by a single-minded determination, moved through the shadows with the precision of a seasoned soldier. But beneath his resolve, he was plagued by doubt. He had always been a man of principle, guided by a strong moral compass, but now he was willing to do whatever it took to save Ilara even if it meant compromising his own values. The Grand Nexus was as imposing as he remembered, its architecture both beautiful and forbidding. David moved through the shadows, avoiding patrols and security systems as he made his way towards the council chambers. His heart raced as he thought of Ilara, held captive by those who once called her their own. When David finally reached the chambers, he found Ilara standing in the center of the room, surrounded by the council members. Her expression was one of defiance, though David could see the fear in her eyes. The council, with their cold, calculating gazes, were discussing her fate. Ilara, who had always struggled with her dual identity, now stood at the crossroads of her past and future. She was torn between her loyalty to David and her lingering sense of duty to her people. But as she faced the council, she realized that she could no longer be defined by the expectations of others. She had to choose her own path, even if it meant standing against everything she had once believed in. David burst into the room, weapon at the ready. The council members turned in shock, but before they could react, David spoke. Let her go, he demanded, his voice steady despite the tension. I'm here to take her back. The council leader, High Counselor Eliana, a tall, regal woman with silver hair, narrowed her eyes. You dare to defy us? You, a male, think you can dictate terms to the Council of Edenus? David stood his ground, his eyes locked on Ilara's. She's my wife, the mother of my children. I won't let you take her from me. The tension in the room was palpable as the Council deliberated. Finally, Eliana spoke. You and Ilara are a threat to our society. Your presence disrupts the balance we have maintained for millennia. We cannot allow you to leave. Both of you must be eliminated. Ilara felt a surge of conflicting emotions. On one hand, she was terrified. These were the women who had shaped her, who had been her mentors and role models. But on the other hand, she felt a deep sense of betrayal. They were willing to kill her and David simply because they represented something different, something they couldn't control. David's heart sank, but he remained defiant. If you try to kill us, I'll fight back. And trust me, you don't want to see what I'm capable of. The council members moved to act, but before they could, Vera leaped into action. The brave feline creature attacked the nearest council member, snarling and swiping with its powerful claws. The room erupted into chaos as the council members tried to defend themselves. In the commotion, one of the guards shocked Vara with an electric weapon, causing the creature to collapse, whimpering in pain. David's heart broke at the sight, but he knew he couldn't afford to be distracted. He quickly activated the AI link to Aurora, commanding the ship to initiate an emergency extraction. Aurora responded instantly, teleporting David, Ilara, and Vera out of the Grand Nexus and back to the main ship. The ship's shields flared to life as they came under attack from Edina's forces, but the advanced technology of the ancient ship proved too much for their pursuers. The ship easily withstood the onslaught and sped away from the planet, leaving Edenus far behind. Safe aboard the ancient ship, David and Ilara tended to Vara, who was bruised but alive. 
the feline's loyalty and bravery had saved them, and they made sure to show their gratitude as they nursed it back to health. A Lara, who had always seen herself as the protector, now felt a deep sense of guilt. It was David and Vera who had saved her, not the other way around. This realization shook her to her core, forcing her to confront the fact that she could no longer rely on the rigid structures of her past. She had to learn to trust in others, to accept that she wasn't alone in this fight. As the ship traveled through space, David and Ilara discussed their next steps. They knew that their enemies would not rest until they were captured or killed, and the recent attack had proven that their technology and resources were not enough to protect them. David was torn. The ship they now commanded was a powerful weapon, but he feared that using it might lead them down the same path as the ancient civilization that had created it. Yet he also knew that without it, they had no chance of surviving. He was faced with an impossible choice. Embrace the power that might corrupt them or risk losing everything they held dear. They realized that their only option was to track down the alien invaders who had stolen their technology and exact their revenge. With Aurora guiding them, they set a course for the last known location of the alien fleet, determined to reclaim what was theirs and secure a future for their family. Ilara, who had always been focused on the past, now found herself looking towards the future. She knew that they couldn't keep running forever. They needed to find a way to stop the cycle of violence and build a life where they could finally be free. But to do that, they would have to confront the darkest parts of themselves and the universe around them. The journey ahead was long and fraught with danger, but David and Ilara were prepared. Their love and determination had seen them through countless trials, and they knew that together they could overcome anything. As they left Edenus behind, David couldn't help but feel a sense of hope. They had survived the impossible before, and with the power of the ancient ship at their disposal, they had a real chance of finding the aliens who had wronged them and bringing them to justice. Their children, now safe aboard the ship, would grow up knowing the true meaning of courage and resilience. They would learn from their parents' example, understanding that even in the darkest of times, there is always a way forward. Ilara, who had always been defined by her past, now saw the potential for a new future. She no longer felt the need to prove herself to the Council or to anyone else. She was free to define her own path alongside David as they searched for a place where they could finally be at peace. David and Ilara's mission was clear. Find the aliens, recover their stolen technology, and protect their family at all costs. The universe was vast, and the challenges ahead were daunting, but they were ready to face them together. The adventure was far from over, and the future was filled with uncertainty. But one thing was certain. David, Ilara, and their children would continue to fight for their freedom, their love, and their right to live in peace. And as their ship sped through the stars, leaving behind the remnants of their past, they knew that their journey had only just begun.